What's happening, Paul Ingram here, Collie Center. In today's training, we're gonna be taking a look at some footwork. I'm gonna be doing a quick little series here on YouTube about the basic footwork and basic footwork drills of Kali. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. This is a perfect time to start because footwork is where I start all of my students' training from the very beginning. If uh, you realize that footwork is extremely important in Kali and you want to uh, really achieve a high level of footwork, Hit that thumbs up button and let's get training. All right, I'm gonna be doing this little kind of mini series here on YouTube about some of the uh, basic footworks when it comes to Kali, uh, at least the way we train Kali here at Kali Center. And uh, I'm gonna give you guys some of the basic drills and then I'm also gonna do some extended lessons and extended drills over in our members area right here on the channel as well. Uh, so, to be, so to get access to those extended drills and lessons, click the join button right below this video and check out becoming a channel sponsor to our channel and you can get access to those exclusive lessons. Let's go ahead and kick right on into it. On the ground here, you're gonna see I have this reverse triangle. The apex of the triangle is at my feet and then it expands outwards 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right. And then if I was to connect these two here, we would get the base of the triangle. Right. In Kali, the way we train Kali, there's basically three basic types of footwork. We have segmented footwork, which is all this kind of linear stuff, right? We're moving on a, on a segment, on a line. We have triangular footwork. Now we're applying some geometry. We're basically putting segments together. And then we have circular footwork. Right? And uh, when it comes down to shapes, here at Collie Center, we always talk about, you know, with among ourselves, how you know triangle is really kind of the only shape because all other shapes are made out of triangles. Because even if you look at a circle, a circle is an infinite amount of triangles. It's 360 degrees of triangles, uh, and that's what makes a circle, right? Um, and then anything else, if you have a square, well, you put two triangles together at, at the base, right? So all these shapes have triangles inside of them. And that's why at Kali, especially here at Kali Center, we pretty much look at what we have triangle footwork and we have circling footwork. And in order to learn that triangle footwork, we need to learn segmented footwork. So we'll get into some segmented footwork uh, in a couple of videos, but I wanna make sure that we're learning from the very core of Filipino martial arts, which is the triangles. Starting off with the reverse triangle. And the reason I begin with the reverse triangle here is because the reverse triangle, we have to understand what is it that we're actually looking to apply on this reverse triangle, okay? We're looking at starting from the apex position, which is the diameter of the fight. Okay? We don't look at center line here at Kali Center. We don't read center line as this perfect zero degrees. This is what we call the diameter of the fight. When I am standing right here at the zero degrees of the circle and my opponent is standing at the 180 degrees of the circle, this is what we refer to as zero degrees or the diameter of the fight. At Kali Center, we reference the center line being hip and shoulder distance. And the reason we use hip and shoulder distance is because of the length of the weapon. What makes Kali such a unique martial art is that we traditionally begin with the weapon, right? where m most other martial arts begin with some sort of form of empty hands training. We start with the weapon. So for us, we have to immediately start dealing with not only the aggression and the power of the weapon, we also have to start dealing with the speed of the weapon as well. And the tip of this weapon travels at least three times faster than the average person's hand. So we need to have explosive footwork, fast, powerful footwork, dynamic footwork, but we also have to understand what is it that we're dealing with so that way we can build the proper attributes, the proper level of athleticism, so that way we can not get hit. Because the goal with Kali, even though you know some people are stick fighting and things, and you can take a lot of punishment on your body with a stick, but at Kali Center, we're not stick fighting. We're looking at how do we translate the skill off of the bolo, the highest expression that Kali has to offer, right? Which is off of the bolo or whatever Filipino martial arts. 
Kali, Eskrima, Arnis, whatever terminology you choose to use. So from here, because we're always looking at the eyes through a bolo, through a blade, when we're training with the sticks, the stick is just a representation of the blade. It's just, it's a training tool. For us at Kali Center, we don't use foam soft sticks. This is our soft stick here at Kali Center. It's just the way we do things. We like to keep things as, I guess, traditional as possible. And uh, we look at the rattan as our soft sticks. This is our training tool, okay? So we want to uh, first understand that. This is why footwork is so important, is because we can't get hit. Right? You get hit with a stick, you might get a broken bone, but when you get hit with the bolo, one, usually that thing gets removed, it will be opened up, and your bone might be going with it. So there's, there's all sorts of issues and reasons why we cannot get hit with the bolo. So we are training to increase the athleticism, increase the ability to navigate terrain to decrease or better eliminate the possibility of us getting hit, okay? And that is what we are thriving for all the time, every single day in our training. So this is why when we're doing our Kali uh, workouts and all that, you'll constantly hear me holding a high emphasis, a high regard on always training to increase your athleticism. You have to, right? Footwork, whether you are training with the single sword, single stick, the double, the knife, the spotty daga, the, the spear, the staff, the empty hands, flexible weapons, throwing weapons. The, even though the weapon principles apply all across the different areas of Kali, the primary thing that never changes is the footwork. So for me to move from a bolo into a spear, of course there's gonna be some modifications to the weapon because, well, the spear, I'm losing manipulation because it's long. Or if I move from principles with the bolo to principles with the knife, well, the knife is shorter, so I'm losing manipulation. So, of course, there's going to be some modifications. But the one thing that never has modifications to it is the footwork. It stays the same all throughout the, all the different 12 areas of Kali. So, from here, let's take a look at the basics of triangle footwork. We have to learn the technical, uh, precise application or execution of the triangle footwork first before we can start to really learn and understand the tactics. So this is why we begin at the very, very beginning with footwork. At Kali Center, footwork is always uh, an exciting topic here at Kali Center because when you're training with us, like if, when you're training with us for, you know, at ITC, five days straight, 50 hours of training underneath the sun, the thing that will save you from getting hit is your footwork. If you think your weapon is gonna save you, it might but your footwork will protect you. So we have a huge appreciation for footwork here. And if you can't get your weapon out in time, if there's multiple opponents, at least you have your feet and hopefully you've been doing your work, <laughs> doing your workout, getting your athleticism up and uh, you're able to uh, get out of there at least with your footwork and navigate that terrain. All right, so let's take a look here at our reverse triangle. There's a lot of tactics for a reverse triangle. We have offensive attacking, we have uh, counter offensive tacking, we're able to deal with multiple opponents. We have multiple opponent tactics within the reverse triangle footwork. It is extremely, extremely versatile. But the most fundamental thing that we're looking to achieve with the reverse triangle footwork is we are moving our body off of the center line. Not just zero degrees. There's many ways to move off of the diameter or to shift the diameter of the fight. With the reverse triangle, we want to move off of the center line. We need to clear the hip and shoulder distance. Extremely important. So in Kali Center, the first basic drill is I'm gonna start with my feet together because we are learning, we are learning where the diameter of the fight is, but we're also learning what the center line of the fight is here referenced at Kali Center. So we are creating this absolute hip and shoulder distance and our plexus is on the diameter of the fight, from zero degrees to 180 degrees of the circumference, of the circle. So from here, in order for me to get off of this at the most efficient way, I am going to turn my hips and shoulders, my torso is gonna to face left 45, as my left foot steps left 45 as well. My right foot is going to trail with my left foot all the way, okay? 
and then I'm gonna return it back just by repeating that motion or flipping that motion. So I'm gonna turn, face left 45, everything steps, making sure that my knee, my left knee stays in line with my toes. We don't wanna step and then do something like this where our toes are going one direction and our knee is going in another direction. Because we train so much on terrain, different types of terrain, um, this is where you end up blowing your knees, really you know, injuring your ankles and, and having all kinds of you know, those joint problems uh, later down the road. So we wanna make sure we have good skeletal structure. We're not breaking the spine. Everything is straight. We are using the human skeletal structure to its greatest advantage here. Okay? This is what is going to allow you to achieve a higher level of athleticism right off the bat. If we don't know how to use our body properly as it's been designed, uh, you're already, no matter how much you're you know, doing your, calis your calisthenics and your cardio workouts and all that, if you're not using the structure of your body to how it was designed to be used, uh, then you're already losing athleticism. If your calisthenics are not really that good yet, your cardio is not really that good yet, if you use the good alignment, the proper structure of your body, you've already increased your athleticism. Okay? So we want to make sure that when we're stepping out, this knee and toe are in, in line. Our back is straight. We're not breaking the spine or anything like that. We're keeping the aerodynamics, okay? And all this is in line. Making sure that our right foot then travels up, okay? Uh, we have what's called our ranging angles or a ranging star, and this is where we can step out and kind of leave this foot behind. There's a tactic for that. But when we're doing reverse triangle, the right foot steps up with it. We're just gonna focus on open triangle today. We're not even gonna to touch the closed triangle today. Then I'm gonna do the same thing going to the right. I'm gonna turn, my torso is gonna to face right 45, right foot's gonna step, making sure that my knee toes are in line, left foot trails. Step this back and come right back, right here to the diameter. Establishing center line, hip and shoulder distance. So here's why we turn the torso here at Collie Center. Okay, we don't do reverse triangle like this. One, it's bad positioning for your legs because you have a tendency to keep the toes forward and then your knee is still going on the 45 degrees. And when you need to change your direction rapidly and aggressively in different terrains, if I stepped into a divot or something like that, you have a good chance of uh, doing some damage to your knee here. And yeah, you may be able to push through that through some training or maybe even like some, you know, if it was a scenario or what, uh, but over time, if you're training it this way, um, you're gonna start getting some knee pains and that's going to slow your training down. So that's, that, you know, that's number one, is, is making sure that we're using the body efficiently. But the other, even more important reason, because you could push through that, a little bit of technical imprecision, um, you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, it, you know, sometimes that's just what happens and you need to do that and it just needs to be really fast. Um, so more importantly is that when we're stepping and keeping our torso facing, uh, my body has to travel through this hip and shoulder distance. It, it takes a lot more time. So my right shoulder has to go through the diameter and it's stuck. It's stuck within that left shoulder distance of the center line. It's here way too long and it's coming forward right up this line. So even though my foot is stepping left 45, 45 degrees, my shoulder is not going 45 degrees and it's going almost up the diameter of the fight. And this is what ends up getting us clipped. And then we cannot change the direction as rapidly because we're not able to execute the next triangle. So if I turn my shoulders, my hips and shoulders, you're gonna notice that this pulls everything out but it keeps it a lot further away than if I'm stepping all the way up. So this allows me to get out of that center line at a much more efficient speed, okay? And much more dynamically, okay? And then same thing going to the right, right here, okay? We don't want to trail this thing behind. This is also a lot slower because when we're here in Kali and we're in this bladed position, which we'll talk about positions coming up. When I'm in the bladed position, said we're not fighting square and we're not too profiled, we're 45 degrees. We're in what's called bladed position. This puts my torso already facing left 45. So now I'm using the most economic motion to get across 
and get behind this person's weapon. I'm traversing terrain right here. That's what triangle footwork is. It's traversing. So from here, I'm basically just running up a straight line, right? Which you don't get more dynamic than that. You know, even Bruce Lee talked about the most, you know, economy of motion, right? The most economical way to move from point A to point B is in a straight line. That's, that's the shortest distance, right? So from here, that's all it is. We're just moving right there in that straight line. But in the beginning, we start off right here so we can establish these three points. Where's the diameter of the fight? Understanding the center line, at least for Kali center, hip and shoulder distance, and understanding the proper angulation of the body to execute at the most efficiency. Okay, that's what we're doing here. Boom. So that's our first drill. We're gonna start with the feet together. Step left 45, bring it back, feet together. Right 45, bring it back, feet together. That's our first drill. So you wanna get some reps in. Okay, work this out. And there's different ways of landing over here, right? We can get really crazy detailed, but I just want you to get the very basics, the very beginning of it down first, before we get into all these crazy details. All right, there's details on how much to drag this foot up, when and where, okay? But right now, we're just kinda getting the basic motions down. If you wanna get way more advanced, then you know what you need to do. Head over to colleagecenter.com, become a sponsor of the channel, Come train with us in person, come out to our ITCs, come out to seminars, all that stuff. And then we can go way further into like crazy detail, okay? That's the first drill. Once we achieve that, very basic, we wanna to start to increase the athleticism. So we're gonna do what's called a switch step or a replacement step. So as I step left 45, I execute this. Now as I come back to the point of the triangle, I'm going to replace my foot and notice that I'm already facing right 45 so I've already taken care of that and then we're gonna step right 45 I'm gonna come up and replace so when you do your replacement step don't stay square okay don't come back stay square and then turn like this when you do your replacement step you are turning the body with it so that way you can just take a forward step up that angle turn it go Turn it, go. Okay, make sure when you're doing this replacement step, I'm gonna try and do this nice and slow. Make sure you don't go airborne. <laughs> you gotta keep your one foot is making contact the entire time. Okay, look, boom, 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 boom. Look, at it. I don't even lose contact with any feet if I, if I don't want to. Otherwise, it's a pump, right? Because I'm gonna use more momentum, but it's not, it's, not a, it's not a hop and a skip and a jump. Okay, you're just switching your feet out and switching the position. You can keep your head forward. That way you can keep your eye on the fight, keep your eye on your opponents. It is a good idea to be able to scan your environment for the potential of other opponents. Or when you're navigating to a new place in the terrain, you can uh, notice any obstacles, any different divots in the ground. But right here, Okay, this will uh, automatically get you performing with more athleticism. Okay, that's your second drill on the reverse triangle. Open reverse triangle. Work those out. Replay this video over and over again. I said a lot in this video. I just shot a ton of information at you. So make sure to go back, listen to the details while you're training it. While you're training it, think about the details that I was talking about and uh, see how they apply. When we look at this type of stepping where we're, where we're kind of linear, this is a different fork. So I'll give you a little bit of a reasoning of why you would see this with Kali Center. I cannot answer why you would see this with other Kali styles and systems out there because I train what I train and uh, I've gained the experience that, that I've gained and I teach based off of that experience. So we don't step in this manner. This later becomes what's called angular stepping and there's a whole different world for angular stepping. Okay? There's, there's, there's all kinds of things that are going on there with angular stepping. 
but we do not step on reverse triangle here with our torso facing the diameter or facing uh, our, our opponent right up the center line, okay? Our reverse triangle, we are always turning the, the hips and shoulders, okay? We don't, we don't turn away, we don't turn in, okay? That, that is not reverse triangle. There's different footworks here at College Center, somewhere else that might be considered reverse triangle. But here at College Center, we do not step square on any of our triangle footwork. We are always angulating the body correctly to move coordinatedly with that triangle. So I'll give this training a go. Really think about the full lesson here that I just gave you. Get on outside, try it out in different environments, different types of terrain, have fun with it. Don't worry about making too many mistakes or anything like that. We're training, we're learning. That stuff is just going to happen. Start slow, take your time, and gradually build up that speed and gradually raise up that intensity. This is a great way to kickstart your uh, footwork, your navigation, increasing your athleticism, and increasing your overall collie performance. To further your training even more, to get more drills, expanded drills on top of these lessons, click the join button right below this video and check out our channel membership area and you can become a sponsor of the channel and get exclusive access to additional footwork training along with all other areas of Kali. Head on over to KaliCenter.com, check out our further training programs, DVD downloads and courses. And if you are interested in becoming a full Inner Triangle member, Go ahead and contact me personally over uh, at the email form over at colleycenter.com and then I can send you more information, the links and all that so that way you can get involved with Collie Center and the team here and uh, really kick off into the, uh, I don't know, I guess the Collie Center way of doing things. All right, so get on out there, go get some training in, go have fun and I'll see you the next time we're training.